Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am VC Pramod with the news at 9. The headlines. Campaigning for final phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh ends. Polling for 72 seats on Tuesday. Three persons killed and at least 10 injured in a grenade attack at Nirankari Satsang Bhavan in Amritsar. Maharashtra cabinet clears reservation for Marathas in educational institutes and jobs. All-party meeting called by Sri Lankan president fails to resolve ongoing political crisis. And four Indian boxers, including MC Mary Com, enter quarterfinals of IBA Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi. Campaigning for the second and final phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh came to an end this evening. Polling will be held in 72 constituencies on Tuesday. On the last day of electioneering, senior leaders of BJP, Congress and other political parties held public meetings at various places to garner support for their respective candidates. More from our correspondent. Curtains came down on public campaign for the second and last phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh this evening. Now the parties can take up door-to-door -door campaign before polling. As many as 1,079 candidates, including 119 women candidates, are in the fray in this phase. Chhattisgarh has 27 districts and 90 assembly segments. The 72 assembly segments which are going for poll in the second phase is spread across 19 districts of the state. Polling for the first phase had already taken place on November 12 in 18 constituencies of the state. Vikalp Shukla, AIR News, Raipur. Meanwhile, one security personnel was killed and two others were injured in an IED blast by Maoists targeting District Reserve Guard team in Basta region. The incident took place when the team was in a search operation in Bheji area of Sukma district. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the NDA government has tirelessly worked for the development of the country during its four-and-a-half-year rule. He was addressing an election rally at Indore in Polbaon, Madhya Pradesh today. Mr. Modi said construction of nine crore toilets in the country, introduction of low-cost LED bulbs, construction of smart cities and setting up of a large number of mobile phone manufacturing units are only a few of the achievements of the government. Indore ne jo karke dikhaya. स्वच्छता के विषय में और मैं आज इस बात को मानने लगा हूं इंदौर की स्वच्छता का ये रूप इंदौर के स्वच्छता की एक महक सिर्फ सरकारी व्यवस्था के कारण है ऐसा मैं नहीं मानता हूं ये सफलता इंदौर के जन जन के संस्कार के कारण है स्वच्छता कभी अभियान था इंदौर ने स्वच्छता को संस्कार बना दिया है Earlier, addressing a rally in Chindwada, Mr. Modi accused the Congress of lying and misleading the people since independence. He also charged the Congress with corruption. The 230-member Madhya Pradesh Assembly will go to polls in a single phase on the 28th of this month. BJP President Amit Shah will interact with the youth of Rajasthan on 21st November. This information was given by Information and Broadcasting Minister Colonel Rajavadan Rathor in Jaipur today. He said the program will be held in Jaipur and six other places in the state. भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने हमेशा अपना संवाद रखा है नौजवानों के साथ 21 नवंबर को 1 बजे से लेकर 3 बजे तक दोपहर में माननीय अध्यक्ष अमित शाह जी राजस्थान के नौजवानों के साथ संवाद करेंगे सीधा संवाद होगा तकरीबन 2 लाख नौजवानों के साथ यह संवाद होगा Replying to a question, Colonel Rathor said that the government is committed to development. He said while several countries are facing economic crisis, India is emerging as a strong country. In Punjab, three people were killed today and at least ten injured in a grenade attack at Nirankari Satsang Bhavan in Raja Sansi village of Amritsar district. DGP Suresh Aroda said police is considering it as a terrorist attack. He was speaking after inspecting the blast site. He said the incident is being probed. Mr. Aroda said two attackers entered the bhavan when satsang was going on and ran away after throwing the grenade. Our correspondent reports that Punjab was on high alert after inputs that jaish e Muhammad terrorists who entered through Fizur might be hiding in the state. Reacting to the news of the blast, Home Minister Rajnath Singh said strongest possible action will be taken against the perpetrators. He spoke to Punjab Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh who apprised him of the situation. 
In a tweet, he called the grenade attack a reprehensible act of violence. Chief Minister Amarinder Singh has announced compensation of 5 lakh rupees each to the kin of the deceased. He reviewed law and order situation in the state with the Home Secretary, the DGP Law and Order and DG Intelligence. In Jammu and Kashmir, a CRPF head constable was killed in a terrorist attack in Pulwama district this evening. Security sources said terrorists attacked paramilitary CRPF camp by firing grenades towards the camp located near railway station Kakapura in the district. Meanwhile, two army soldiers were injured when terrorists attacked army patrolling party at Gandhi Bagh area of Kakapura. In Uttarakhand, 14 people were killed and 13 others injured when a passenger bus fell into a deep gorge near Damta in Uttarkashi district today. Talking to AIR, District Magistrate Ashish Chauhan said, Private bus thi. Bus mein 28 ke aspas vyakti sawar the. Unne Damta naam ke sthan ke paas mein 1 kilometer pehle ye bus 200 meter gehri khai mein giri. Aur usme 14 logon ki unfortunately death ho gayi. 14 injured the. Unme se serious patients ko hum logo ne Chopper ke through Dehradun ke aur Rishikesh ke AIMS Jolly Grant Hospitals mein hum logo ne unhe admit karwaya. Aur uske aatar ek 8 samanya rup se ghayal logon ko ambulances ke through hum logo ne bheja. Chief Minister Trivendra Singh Rawat has instructed that an ex gratia amount be provided to the family of each deceased. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis today said that the Maratha community will get reservation in educational institutes and jobs under a new category SEBC socially and economically backward. He was addressing a press conference after the customary tea party a day before the winter session of Maharashtra legislature in Mumbai. Mr. Fadnavi said the Marathas will get reservation from an independent quota and this will not affect the reservations given to the other backward classes. The chief minister added that the State Commission for Backward Classes in its report submitted recently said that extraordinary and exceptional circumstances prevail among the Marathas, which makes them eligible to reap the benefits of reservation. Government is taking steps to start passenger ship services connecting the southern ports of Kanyakumari, Tutukudi and Rameshwaram. This was informed by Union Minister of State for Shipping, Pun Radhakrishnan. He was speaking at a function in Tutukuri today. The minister also said that the centre will announce compensation to Tamil Nadu for destruction caused by Cyclone Gaja after the state government submits a report. President Ramnath Kovind is in Vietnam on a state visit. He reached Danang City this afternoon on the first leg of his two-nation visit. He will visit Australia on Wednesday on the second leg of the visit. Mr. Kovind is accompanied by a high-level delegation. During his stay in Vietnam, the President will hold talks with the country's leadership. Our correspondent reports that the President's visit is part of India's growing engagement with the countries in the Indo-Pacific region. The President has reached Da Nang as a part of his three-day visit to Vietnam. Da Nang has rich historical and civilization connection with India. Tomorrow, President is scheduled to visit Misson in Da Nang, which is famous for its World Heritage Site. It has remnants of Buddhist connection and the Hindu Sham civilization in the form of ancient temples. India is helping Vietnam in the preservation and conservation of some of these temples. It may be recalled that President Ramnath Kovind is visiting Vietnam on the invitation of his Vietnamese counterpart Nguyen Phu Trong, who has been elected as President last month in Itself. Sanjeev Sundarial, AIR News, Danang, Vietnam. In Sri Lanka, the all party conference called by President Maitripala Sirisena failed to reach an agreement on resolving the impasse in parliament and the new government. More from our correspondent. The meeting was significant as President Sirisena, new PM Rajapaksa, and ousted PM Vikram Singhe were together for the first time since the crisis began last month. However, leaders coming out of the meeting termed it inconclusive. Mr. Vikram Singhe has maintained that they have the majority and the no confidence motion against Rajapaksa government should be validated. However, the government side insists that proper procedure has not been followed on the motion and have accused the speaker of bias. Under these circumstances, it has to be seen whether Mr. Vikram Singhe returns to power or the country moves to vote for a new government. Santosh Kumar for AIR News from Colombo. Police chiefs from around the world gathered in Dubai today for Interpol's General Assembly to select a new president after the agency's former leader was detained in China. Interpol member states will also be deciding whether to accept Kosovo as a full member 
which would allow officials there to file red notices for Serbian officials that Kosovo considers war criminals. Former Interpol chief Meng Hongwai, who was China's vice minister of public security, went missing while on a trip to China in September. It later emerged that Meng was detained by China. Chinese authorities say Meng is being lawfully investigated for taking bribes and other crimes. Back home, the ongoing India International Trade Fair at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi was open for general public from today. A large number of people thronged the fair to check out a wide range of products on display. Food stalls serving regional cuisines are among major attractions of the fair. Tickets are available at all metro stations other than Pragati Maidan. These are not being sold at trade fair sale counters. Visitors can also book tickets online through ITPO portal www.indiatradefair.com. The entry ticket costs 60 rupees for adults and 40 rupees for children during weekdays. The charges will be 120 rupees for adults and 60 for children during weekends and holidays. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate Delhi Metro's Escorts Mujassar Ballabgad stretch of the Violet Line tomorrow. The distance between the two places on this corridor is 3.2 kilometers. Ballabgad will become the fourth city in Haryana to get metro connectivity after Gurugram, Faridabad and Bahadurgarh. Kaumi Ekta Week will be observed across the country from tomorrow to foster and reinforce the spirit of criminal harmony and national integration. The observation also provides an opportunity to reaffirm age-old traditions and faith in the values of tolerance, coexistence and brotherhood in a multicultural and multi-religious society. Programs, symposia and seminars will be organized to emphasize secularism, anti-communalism and non-violence during the week. Ujala scheme or Unnat Jyoti by Affordable LEDs for All was launched by the central government in 2015 to provide LED bulbs to domestic consumers. The Energy Efficiency Initiative has made an impact in Goa's urban and rural areas. Here is a ground report from our correspondent. Under the Ujala scheme, the Goa Electricity Department has provided LED bulbs to electricity consumers. The key results have been energy and financial savings. Shruti Desai, a resident of Karanzalem near Panji, is a beneficiary of the Ujala scheme. She speaks about the benefits of the scheme. My name is uh, Shruti Chandan Desai. I'm residing in Models Millennium Vistas in Karanjalam, Goa. We had uh, got this tree bulb free, of course, around two years back, and they are really very good quality. It consumes very less electricity compared to the 60 watt TFL bulb. The electricity bill, you know, before using this bulb, we used to get around 1300 rupees bill per month, whereas now it is around 1000 rupees. LED bulbs have a longer life than other bulbs, thereby providing further cost savings in the longer term. Sarkar from Goa for AIR. On to sports. Four Indian boxers, including world champion MC Mericom, reached the quarterfinals of Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi this evening. Mary defeated Ajerim Kesenayeva of Kazakhstan in 48kg category by unanimous 5-0 decision. Manisha Mohan, Lavlina Borgohan and Bhagyabhati Kachar also advanced to the quarterfinals in the respective weight categories. Manisha defeated Dina Zolamanbi from Kazakhstan 5-0 in 54kg category. Lavlina beat Panama's Athena Bailan in 69kg and Bhagyabhati humbled Irina Nikoleta Schonberger of Germany in 81kg category. The new services division of All India Radio in its weekly bilingual live phone in program, Public Speak, will bring you a discussion tomorrow on awareness and treatment of diabetes. This can be heard on FM Gold Channel additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Campaigning for final phase of assembly elections in Chhattisgarh ends, polling for 72 seats on Tuesday. Three persons killed and at least 10 injured in a grenade attack at Nirankari Satsang Bhavan in Amritsar. Maharashtra Cabinet clears reservation for Marathas in education institutes and jobs. All party meeting called by Sri Lankan President fails to resolve ongoing political crisis. And four Indian boxers, including MC Mary Com, enter quarterfinals of AIBA Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. That is all in the news at 9. Good night.